So I come from rural Northern California, a place called Boonville. Um, I grew up on an intentional community that was um, taking place in Northern California. Um, and I start there because I think that growing up in a pretty alternative setting um, has deeply shaped who I am today and also um, taught me, the kind of adults in my life really taught me and instilled in me from an early age that another way of living is possible. Yes, it requires hard work. Yes, it requires a lot of time. Um, and also it is possible. Um, I also was kind of fascinated from an early age with questions of faith and justice, and that has remained a thread throughout my life. After graduating college, I worked to kind of co-build an organization that uh, worked on getting young people back to their hometowns across the United States, especially rural and underserved communities across the states to do local capacity building projects. Um, this organization has placed over 200 fellows in the first three years of our um, of our story. And I, my particular emphasis was working on curriculum building and fellow support. Um, and so I, I thought a lot about what it takes to build strong communities, both amongst a fellowship cohort and again, kind of in rural and underserved communities across the states where we are empowering our fellows to do the own, their own work in their hometowns. This reactivated the question for me, which has been kind of an orienting question in my life, which is what does it take to build strong communities? Um, and also, what is it that gets us to do hard things in life? Um, my best answer to both of these questions is faith. And I define this very broadly. Um, for some, this might be faith in God, but for others, it might be faith in community or love or love of country or any number of other things. But that thing that makes us feel both small and big at the same time, and we'll return to this later. I returned to divinity school to particularly focus on the role of faith in the climate crisis. So how can faith be an animating force towards um, supporting us at kind of the existential level, as I mentioned before, but also activating us to do the work that needs to happen as we face uh, kind of the call to reimagine um, our future. I wanted to take a few minutes just to um, name some of the people that I've worked in conversation with, um, either in person, you know, across the table or through reading their work. I fully believe that we do work in community and um, want to just take a moment to kind of honor the scholarship and the um, deep investment that has happened much before me. Um, so these are a few of the folks that I turn to time and again um, for insight and input. Um, uh, they have been deep mentors to me, and I consider them to be my community of practice. I hope I can um, do them justice today. And also, I really encourage anyone who is here today to think about reading some of their work. Not all of them are written. Some of them are um, visual artists and other um, scholars and practitioners, but um, they are truly amazing. I'm not going to cite them as I go because um, the exercises we're going to be doing are um, more embodied practices, but I hope you kind of take from this that they have deeply informed each of the practices that we're going to be doing today. So I'd love to just get a sense of uh, who's in the room and if folks on Zoom can put them their names in the chat so that others can see who is on Zoom. Um, we're going to do just a quick round of introductions um, just so we can kind of get a sense of who is here with us today. So I'm going to invite people to share your name, your pronouns, if you wish, and then a place you call home. And I'm going to invite you to think about this pretty expansively. So this could be a town or this could be, you know, a specific um, geographic location, but it could also be um, a group of people that you feel at home with. It could be, um, you know, an activity that you do that really makes you feel at home. So yes, your name, your pronouns, if you wish, and then a place that you call home. And I can model it. My name is Maya as you all know. My pronouns are she, her, and a place I call home. I mentioned I'm from Northern California. There's this place on the bluffs of Northern California that is um, jutting out into the Pacific coast. And I go there when I'm home and I sit on this little point of land and that is where I feel most at home. Lynn said, do you mind if I ask you to introduce yourself? You don't have to if you don't want to. That's totally fine. You can talk to me if that's not an answer. Okay. Can you say hi to someone? Do you get 
Okay, amazing. Hi, y'all. Thanks for joining. So if those who are on Zoom, I won't be able to see your chat, but you can just put your chat in the Zoom or put your message in the Zoom chat so that we can get a sense of who else is in the room. So we're going to now kind of move into the first section of um, the kind of heft of our conversation together. Um, the first part of this um, uh, workshop will be kind of connecting to that which gives you strength. So our orienting question is what gives you strength, but I'm going to walk us through a kind of few components prior to us diving into that question. And this is all about kind of making sure that we have a, set, a chance to really um, orient towards the thing that, make, that draws us beyond ourselves, the thing that can help us find fuel for the way. Um, as we face um, really difficult work, often work that can burn us out. So I'm going to walk you through a uh, short visual visualization exercise. Then we'll do some solo journaling. Um, because we are um, we have kind of a majority of people on Zoom, rather than doing kind of a verbal share out, I'm just going to invite people to write thoughts in the chat. Um, this might mean we move, we move a little bit quicker through the share out component, but that is totally fine. Um, so we're going to begin with a visualization. I'm going to invite you to, again, take a moment to close your eyes. You feel comfortable or just lower them. Plant your feet on the ground. And imagine a moment where you felt connected to something bigger than yourself. Perhaps this came at a time of triumph excitement, grief, or quiet. Maybe it came at the end of something that you worked really hard for. Maybe it came while you were gathered in community, or maybe you were alone outside somewhere. Let this be a moment in which you felt both small and big at the same time. When you thought, Ah, uh, yes, this. When you felt resonant with whatever was happening around you. Notice if it feels easy or hard for you to think of a moment like this. It's not good or bad either way. It's just important information. Once you have an example or an image in mind, try to locate yourself in that moment. Notice the details of it. Were you with people or alone? What specifically were you doing? Was there noise? No noise. Any other senses? Just let yourself kind of simmer in that image. If you're feeling stuck or there's no example coming to mind, you might instead consider that question again, what gives you strength? could be family or community, belief in future generations, something that's larger than yourself. As you're ready, you can Reopen your eyes. I'm going to invite you now to grab a piece of paper if you want. Um, for those who are on Zoom, you can grab a piece of paper, or if you prefer to type or, um, type on your laptop or any other um, piece of technology, you're welcome to do that. We're going to take just a few moments to reflect on the experience you just had. Um, again, this part of 
the work is thinking about how we integrate kind of the embodied experience of tapping into the thing that gives us strength into ourselves and our world. There are two questions I'm going to invite you to specifically reflect on. One is this question again of what gives you strength. And the second is what are the practices that help you access that? So we're going to take a few minutes to journal now. And for those in the room, I do have some paper up here if you want some, um, or you can do it in your own way. So we're going to move into a brief, brief moment of quiet. Um, as folks take a second to reflect and journal. Again, the orient orienting questions are what gives you strength and what practices help you access that feeling? can take one more minute to continue journaling on the two questions, what gives you strength and what practices help you access the feeling. Find a stopping place in your writing. I'm gonna invite anyone who wants to share to share in the chat or out loud. Part of the hope is that we can learn from each other's practices too, so that there is um, collective knowledge about what is possible and what sort of practices can help us access that feeling of being big and small at the same time, even when we're not in a workshop specifically dedicated to that work. While folks um, reflect on this, I'll share my answer to this question. One of the things that gives me strength is a belief that another world is possible and also um, seeing it happen all around me. I think there are both small and large ways that people are um, living out the reality that another world is possible all around us. There are really amazing organizations doing beautiful work. There are the summer in the hospital. I saw so many uh, medical professionals who were embodying such profound care for patients. And that to me felt like an example that another world is possible. And one of the things that gives me strength is gathering with my loved ones around a table, breaking bread together looking in each other's eyes, reminding myself of the community that can hold me through this work. Awesome. Finding strength in community. Same here. Awesome, thank you all. So we're gonna move now into the second kind of core component of our time together. This is using that exercise that we just did around um, accessing the things that give us strength to work with some of the more difficult emotions that can come up as we navigate through this world or as we do work in the climate space or any other space really. Um, and 
as we face kind of this work in this future, and as many of you already know, who are immersed in either community building work or planetary health work or climate work, all of the above, they're so interconnected, difficult emotions might arise. This might be loneliness or grief or isolation. And these emotions, if left unattended, can burn us out. There was a lot of that this summer that I saw. Many patients were either, um, you know, people who had been working in a care profession for a long time, and we're now facing health implications of that. Many doctors and nurses and all of the other folks who can work in the hospital, the cleaning staff, the, um, the kitchen staff, are facing a lot of burnout. There's a huge amount of turnover right now in the medical world. So it can burn us out. And another part of spiritual care, what I was working with patients on and also with um, the medical team on, is allowing ourselves to work with difficult emotions, to face them and let them move through us. And we do this in community. It's kind of hard to do that just by yourself. So today we'll be building on the work that we just did, um, accessing sources of strength to engage with and move with a more difficult feeling. Bless you. I'm gonna focus on shame today. Um, I think this emotion has particular uh, clout kind of in, um, whatever, kind of writ large today. Um, it can, it's a particularly powerful emotion. I think it can freeze us, it can overwhelm us, it can tell us that we're not worthy of anything. And it can be really present in this work of building a new future. Um, and one of the beautiful things is that spiritual care and resourcing allows us to be imperfect rather than freezing. It allows us to kind of face the feeling of shame or whatever it was that triggered it and kind of move with it rather than feeling like we need to distance from it allows us to find connection even amidst difficulty. So we're going to um, be moving with shame and finding release and forgiveness as we move forward. But I will just note, if shame is not where you're at today, either you don't want to access that feeling or another emotion is feeling more present for you, maybe again, kind of grief or loneliness or any other kind of uh, more tender emotion, you can just substitute that emotion in for shame every time I say it throughout this exercise. And if you're just not wanting to do this work today at all, you can just sit there and either listen to the sound of my voice and zone out and think other thoughts or um, put me on mute for a little while. Um, I'm going to invite those who are on Zoom to do two things. One is grab a pen and paper again because we're going to do a little bit of writing. And the second is get some vessel of water. So um, a glass of water, a bowl of water, something like that. So we're again gonna begin with a kind of embodied exercise. So I'm gonna invite you again to plant your feet on the ground and close your eyes. Feel your feet on the ground. I'm gonna ask our overarching question. Where are you feeling shame? Now I'll invite you to just notice what that did in your body. Notice what happened when I asked that question. Notice any immediate reactions. And then begin scanning your body. Noticing if something got tight or if something clenched when I asked that question. Beginning with your feet, moving up your legs, up your knees, your thighs, your hips, all the way up your back, your belly and chest. your shoulders, just checking in. Where are you holding shame in your body? Where are you feeling tightness? Letting your breath and attention move down your arms, your hands, up your neck, your head. Anywhere that you do notice this feeling of tightness, I'm just going to invite you to 
direct additional breath to that place. Breath can be a source of love, source of release. So just offer some additional breath to the places that feel particularly tight where you're holding on, clenching. Now that you've moved up your body, noticing the places that need some attention, let your breath kind of move beyond the limits of your body. And I'm gonna ask you another question, which is from who do you need forgiveness to release that shame? This will be different for each person. Perhaps as a specific person or yourself, perhaps you find that you think of God or another word for the sacred. Perhaps you think of the land. The question again is, from whom do you need forgiveness to release that shame? And again, just notice what happens in your body as you bring that person to mind. Take one more deep breath in. And open your eyes. So I'm going to again, again invite you to do a little bit of reflection and journaling. And you can journal anything that you want about that experience, but I'm going to particularly invite you to answer those two questions, which is where are you feeling shame? And then the name of the person um, that you feel you need forgiveness from. So we'll take another two minutes to work with that prompt. I'll hold some quiet here. And I actually am, for the people on Zoom, going to invite you to write this down on paper, if possible, for where we're going next. And I'm going to do the same. take one or two more minutes just to again reflect on those two questions. Sitting with any discomfort that comes up as you think about this can be hard to hold. Take just 30 more seconds. So come to a stopping place in your writing. The next part of how we're gonna work with this emotion is to ask for help. Shame is a weighty thing, so are each of these more difficult feelings. They are hard to hold alone. That's part of shame's power. It makes us think we're unlovable, unworthy, and it tricks us into thinking that we have to do it alone. Forgiveness is also a weighty thing, and I know that. 
And when I said that word, I can feel its weight. And though we can't demand it of others, we can offer it to ourselves and we can ask for help in holding that for ourselves. So we're going to do kind of a brief um, exercise that invites you to ask for help in holding this emotion. Um, I'm going to model what it looks like in the room, but for those who are on Zoom, um, again, you'll need your piece of paper and your glass of water. And we're going to place the piece of paper in the water, allowing the ink to run and allowing the water to help hold this feeling. This practice is not to imply that we are only worthy if we're free of shame, but rather across so many traditions, water is a very powerful cleansing vehicle. So this is an embodied practice to help us find peace amidst imperfection. Water can hold it all and we do not have to do it alone. If there are any practices that are part of your tradition that feel right to do afterwards, maybe a hand to a heart or any other thing, please feel free. If you're on Zoom, again, you can place your paper in the water itself, or if you if that's not possible for you for any reason, you can just hold the paper in your hand and like dispose of it afterwards and then wash your hands. So I'm gonna do that for, um, we have some vessels of water in the room. I'm gonna do that here. Anyone else can participate, but for those on Zoom, we'll take just about a minute or so to do this activity. Thank you all. Thank you for being willing to dive into the difficulty together. This ritual doesn't mean anything about the ease of working with difficult emotions. It doesn't mean that it's not going to still be hard. But I hope that this image of ink dissolving in water can be an anchor to return to, maybe a practice to return to when you feel any of these more challenging emotions building up in you. And again, you can translate this to make it your own. In some traditions, you know, there's a, um, a prayer or ritual that happens around the use of water. In others, there might be kind of the pouring of water on self or the pouring of water on something alive, like a plant or a flower. And for those who are on Zoom, I'm going to also be using this vessel as kind of a symbolic representation of the... Um, cleansing of your own, whatever you wrote on the paper too. So I'm going to dispose of this outside on a living thing when I leave this room. So as you sit down and settle back down after the exercise, just notice your breath again. Notice what happened to your body as you were kind of engaging in that work. And we're going to move into the last part of our um, kind of core um, exercises together. And this is um, after coming out of, right, kind of the more challenging work. This is the part about regrounding. So again, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. And I'm going to invite you to remember the place that you called home in your introduction. Really bring that place to mind. Let yourself kind of fully inhabit that place. Notice everything about it. You know it best. What does it look like? Is it rich in color or is there one predominant color? What does it sound like? Are there, is there music present? Are there voices? Is there the sound of wind, something else? Are there any smells present? What do you love about it? 
What about it makes your heart beat faster? And what breaks your heart about this place? What do you hope for its future? And what are you grateful for about this place? Take one more minute to really place yourself in this location you call home. Imagine yourself fully immersed. And before you open your eyes, I'm going to invite you to be drawing upon that image. So stay in it, even when you open your eyes. And we're going to be writing short blessings for that place. This is a Divinity School secret. A blessing is anything you want it to be. It could be a line of gratitude or a short prayer or a wish. Keep it short. You only have a few minutes to write it and let it flow freely. But this is a way of offering back to the things that give us strength and the places that have shaped us. Remember the re to remember the reciprocity with the places that we call home and to find our connection to our anchoring spots once again. So we're going to take a few minutes now to um, write those blessings. Again, just free write. Don't edit it. It's totally fine. You, go, you only have to share if you want to. And I'll hold some silence up here as people find their words and write their blessings. And take just one more minute or so to write your blessing. And as you find a stopping place, if anyone is willing to share in the chat, maybe a word or a phrase from your blessing, that would be wonderful. No pressure. I can share mine with you. This is a blessing for the wind on that point of land that I mentioned in Bodega. Blessing for the wind. May it keep my cheeks rosy. May it find home in the grasses. May it be free. Again, blessings are an exercise to um, remember that we too have a role in imagining the future. We too have a role in sending people and beings on their way. And we too can reconnect to the places that shape us. So we're headed into the closing exercise together. 
it's been such an honor to spend time together in this hybridized format. And we're gonna close together by sharing one commitment we're making as we head out of the room and one word about how we're feeling. Um, and I picked both of these prompts because um, part of the power of spiritual care and resourcing is that it can subtly shape the ways that we move through the world after kind of an event that is um, maybe particularly prioritizing spiritual care and resourcing. And so I want to encourage everyone to consider what small, can be very small commitment you want to make that can subtly shift some of the ways that you're moving through the world to support yourself, fuel yourself, um, and kind of continue to um, hold you in this work that you are doing each and every day. And the second prompt I picked because um, I think it's important to also note how we are leaving a space, what, what, what we're feeling as we leave a space. Um, it's good information for us as we head throughout the rest of our day. So we'll take about 30 seconds just to drop in and assess uh, the commitment that you wanna make and the word that you wanna to continue to sit with. Zoom folks, if you wanna put that in the chat, we can capture your thoughts there. My commitment is to keep gathering people. Again, that's one of the places that I find strength. And a word I'm gonna to continue to sit with. I wrote this word free in my blessing. I'm gonna to continue to sit with the word free. I'll give just a few more seconds for folks to simmer with this prompt. And before we close out today, I want to leave all of you with a blessing from me. So I wrote this a few weeks ago as I was thinking about what this time asks of us. And um, yeah, may it offer you fuel for the way. Dear ones, beloveds, we are here. We are here and alive. Our hearts are beating and breaking and beating again. May we feel our heart like a bell in our chest. May we let ourselves wail. May we hear our own voice as that of God. May we listen for the songs of others and hear God's answer. May we gather close, bringing ourselves silly into a cacophony of divine blessing, moving with the ache, staying with each other. May we, may we sing ourselves home. Thank you all so much. It's been such a joy to spend this 50 minute period with you. Have a great time at the rest of the conference. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>